What's up guys? Welcome back to channel. It's Maverick here with another episode of Fire Force Season 2. So, uh, in any case, last episode, not really much change, right? We had a lot of posturing, all three parties involved are still basically trying to show off their abilities, getting ready for a big battle, that includes the Aeth, the, um, the Ashen Knights, and of course Hajima as well. Now, um, <laughs> I think the chaos that we see right now is mostly uh, the fault of the Ashen Knights, but hey, that's what we should be expecting from them, right? They they literally are just there to stir some shit up. Uh, but in any case, I think all the posturing has been done, and now is the time for a counterattack. So, hopefully, uh, we get to see some pretty cool stuff in this episode. Uh, Offer looks ready to do something, Shin read it to as well. And, well, let's just jump into it and hope this one is a hype one. Alright, let's begin in 3, 2, 1 play <laughs> thank goodness you are dumb oh yeah and of course poor Nataku oh, we start with the opening this time no, I think we got a little bit, um, how should I say, we went a little bit further back in time, right? Because by the end of last episode, I believe Inka, and, um, who's the one who's protecting her right now again? What's her name? Risa? Rita? Or whatever she is. They were both on, on ground level. I love how Iris always, like, has a specific scene for her, but we haven't, like, her presence in this series so far is so low. I know it's not her fault in anything, but still, I'm just saying. I find it really funny. Hmm. So is that marshmallow dude Nataku or not? Maybe it's not the same thing that they're fighting right now? Boys be shonen yo. <laughs> Fire at. He literally looks like he's being sucked into the monster. Oh. Now Della Link. <laughs> A doctor, eh? The worst kind of parents. Oh, okay, that's a little bit hyperbole. Mm 
Man, this this kid's mentality is all sorts of messed up. Even without now nah, that dude in his mind. He just wants to be like, no, I can't. Yeah, he's a pillar, all right. All right. <laughs> oh. Ooh. It's literally like a nuclear bomb, I guess. Yeah, it even has this sort of like a nuclear symbol there. Oof. Who's gonna be the one to stop this? I think it's Corona, right? Oh uh, no! It's... Holy shit, this dude! Yeah, he takes his... He takes his job seriously, man. But if you reflect it... Oh! Yeah, this is all your fault now, way. <laughs> Let's go. How to raise good children? Really? Oh, how to raise Hamway? <laughs> So she was there since she was a little girl. <laughs> Man. I think Karel might be my favorite character so far. <laughs> this dude! Go! Woo! Reflect! <laughs> OMG! To the moon? To the effing moon! Oh my god! Holy shit, dude. Well, this is the man right there. Alright, are you actually gonna do something now, dude?
Ooh. That was fast. Oof. Hmm. Considering the title, right? Be weak. Children should be weak. I wonder if he's the one who's gonna say that. I think Corona's actually going to tell him, no, you don't have to. Oof. He's still calling him Kuruno-san. And so Nataku is going to join Hajima. Yeah. <laughs> oh. OMG. I find it absolutely entertaining. Yep. <laughs> Consider me to 1%. Hello.
Hmm. Well, I was definitely expecting that Taku to uh, just stay in Pajama. It certainly played out a lot differently than I was expecting. Here we go. Now for the aftermath. See the president, right? You're still playing, dude? Really? Like, how about you say fifteen million? <laughs>
How did you get in here? That's an interesting turn of events. So basically, he's one, like one of those, only I can bully him. You guys, <laughs> you guys back off. Ah, that is interesting. All right, see you guys after this. Okay, this has got to be one of my favorite episodes in a while. Man, that was great. That was as hype as I was expecting it. And also, it involved not really our main protagonists, right? It, but instead involving all the other uh, surrounding forces as well. In fact, literally, the two stars of this particular episode, one was with Hydrima and one was with the Ashen Knights. Ah, I love it. And Karon, man, you know... Throughout the series, I think my favorite character has always been Joker so far, just because I like his aesthetic, I like how he's sort of like a third neutral party, you know, he has what he wants to do, and, and so on and so forth, right? And not to mention his powers and whatnot, I find it pretty brilliant. But I think with this episode, I have like absolute respect for Caron. He m just might be my favorite character out of the entire series right now. Like that was so awesome. He's like, I don't care which side you're on. If you're a fire pillar, uh, sorry. If you're a pillar, I am going to protect you, right? Um, and he doesn't. To him, it doesn't even really care like which side the pillars are on, as long as they are being adequately protected, right? Uh, and also, you know, just. Uh, just him actually being able to get that that was essentially a nuclear bomb level of uh, of destruction right to, to be able to absorb all that and reflect it all the way to the moon man that that was hype as half um, and not to mention you know you get to see him taking this entire protector thing very seriously as well I think another favorite part of my of this episode uh, was actually seeing him raise up Hamoy while she was still just a child and in, into what she is now now I'm gonna go out and say she he probably didn't really do a good job of raising her considering how bratty she is right now and how um well 
kids will be kids, right? She was basically like a big kid this episode, uh, you know, running running around doing whatever she pleases and not caring for any of the consequences, allowing the adults to clean up after her, right? But uh, still, you, you can see how he takes his job seriously, and I mean, I just love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I already loved it. I already uh, really enjoyed it back a few episodes when he and Shinra were going at it, and that that really uh, that that really um, delighted me as well. And with this episode, boom! Absolutely my favorite character so far. Um, and then, of course, we also have Kuruno, right? And uh, indeed, it did happen. Nanaku is actually with Hajima now, affiliated with Hajima, which uh, I do think makes a lot of sense, considering that these are three different entities, and um, you know, you need to balance things out, right? So that each side has has some pillars um, in order to have a stake in the game. So uh, right now, what is the total count? We are up at six pillars right now, right? Uh, so of these six pillars, three of them are a Associate with the Ashen Knights, one with the Fire Force, and then another one with um, with Hydruma. And then I think the remaining one is the one within Amaterasu, right? So that's pretty much uh, how we are looking at it right now. I wonder how many... We, we need eight, right? Uh, I think there were like eight pillars. So, so two more. Mm, I think it would make sense for one each to go to Hydruma and... Um, and then uh, the Fire Force as well, but we shall see. I, we're probably not going to get into that within this season. I, I highly doubt that another pillar is going to uh, appear so quickly. But Kurono, man, he is the real deal, right? You can see that he was not really going at his full strength even in the past few episodes and whatnot. Like, you know, going up against uh, Naraku uh, within his enraged form, if you want to call it, and basically slicing up it up like it was absolutely nothing. Oof! Oof, like if he really battled seriously with Shinra, I think Shinra would be in a lot of trouble right now. And even the Ashenites were impressed with his uh, capabilities and so on and so forth. Um, now, even though I was expecting Nanaku to eventually go with Hajima, I wasn't quite expecting this kind of outcome, but I guess it would make sense, right? People having so much expectations on him, and now finally someone who says that he does not expect anything from him, and in fact just wants him to, to you know, just, just chill out, right? Just live his life, chill out, and so on and so forth. Yeah. I don't think it's actually that uncommon of a sort of relationship. It reminds me of a lot of those, um, you know, a lot of those tropes where maybe you have an elder sibling always bullying a younger sibling, right? However, you know, only they can bully that younger sibling. If if it's someone outside the family, no can do. Only only that person is allowed to to um like a big bro or a big sister or something or not or whatnot. You know, only they can um they can tease their their younger sibling and whatnot. It kind of gives me that same sort of dynamic here. So I wouldn't really say it's that perverted. It's that uh, uncommon, but. Uh, um, <laughs> indeed, it's it's a pretty interesting outcome to all of this, and so yeah, I, I mean, I was absolutely satisfied by this episode. So you know, you can consider it a sort of setback for our main heroes and whatnot, but not they gain some things as well, right? At the end of this, being able to be on a truce with Hajima, working towards a common goal, and. I do believe that Hajima, at least the president, he's speaking the truth, right? Even if there was uh, potentially any connection between Hajima and the Evangelist and the Ashen Knights and whatnot, uh, probably similar to the Temple, that happened a long time ago or whatnot. And for this generation, they're just doing, they're just uh, going by things which, um, through their own values and morals and desires and so on and so forth. So I, I think that's actually the truth. So the question then becomes, how are they going to continue their investigation, right? Because so far the temple is a dead end, Hygiene is a dead end, what now? I think um, the first things first, they need to report back to Captain Burns, right? Allow him to know of the situation and then see where we can go from here. Potentially go investigate the actual Amaterasu, like try to make an Adela link there with whoever is inside it and um, try to glean more information that way. That's the best solution I can think of right now. Otherwise, it seems that we are at a dead end. But uh, in any case, that was it for episode 17 of Fire Force. Great episode. Uh, I haven't felt this hype for a Fire Force episode in quite a while now. But once again, uh, I think I can safely say that season 2 vastly is vastly superior to season 1. Um, I just love the development, love the abilities, love the characters. And hopefully it can continue to keep its foot on the pedal all the way to the end. 
Alright, uh, so thank you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Maverick out.